the fifth Angola Oil and Gas Conference, taking place in Luanda, Angola, gathers industry experts and government stakeholders to explore the oil and gas industry in Angola to increase oil production and work towards securing access to energy. We are living at a time when young Africans, young Angolans are speaking to us, for us, about our future. It could not have been a better opening than a poetic but yet true rendition of where we stand as an industry. If Angola was a business or a case study, it would be a case study at Harvard Business School. It's a case study around how to turn around, a case study about how to get it going when everybody counts you out. A case study about an industry that takes shots every day, people not believing in what they do, but working together with government, with leadership, defines a path, and that path that that industry stands and say, we can turn it around and move it together. That is Angola, and that's why we have everyone in this room that was not there in 2019. I can see Gordon smiling like nobody ever expect. Guido Brusco is back. They took him out of Angola, he keeps coming back. I think, Mr. President, you might wanna make him a citizen. But also you saw a concessionary ANPG that decided and worked so hard with the industry and now you see Angola signing new contracts. Transformation around Sonagol, making it more efficient, more pragmatic, lean, and meaner. A ministry that decided to divulge powers to other sectors. In Africa, we like to keep the power to us. But in Angola, they give the power to others and say, go out there and work and do business. That's something you don't see around Africa. Minister Gabriel, is that true? <laughs> Angola divides power and say, get on there, get to work. Fiscals that look so good that Chevron commits to a risk service agreement on block 49 and 50. I don't know if you people know what risk service agreement for some of the guys in, in the back. You take a lot of risks in ultra deep water and spend a lot of money and Exxon didn't say, I want to stay away. Exxon just likes to get in with the show. Where's Richard? Richard says, I'm going to drill more wells. And that's why you see Richard going on 30, 44. Then he didn't stop there. He said, at 45. And 45 became the great story. So we got Richard moving. Richard, you're going to drill very soon. And we're going to get some results. Mr. Minister, I promise I wouldn't use those three words of freedom. But last night you told me it's okay. And you became the minister of drill, baby drill. We need to be proud of this industry and never apologize to anybody when we believe in drilling. I believe in drilling. I believe in oil so much. I don't know what I would do without oil. But Angola didn't stop there. Angola moved on projects. That's why we're seeing the Lubito Corridor, the Lubito Refineries, and you're seeing Gemco and others moving forward. But it even makes it better. Country welcomes new independence. That's why you have the adventurers of the world. Paul McDade left Tula. I thought the guy was, was out of work. But the guy comes right back with adventure, and Angola gives him a new home. Paul, there's always home for a refugee. So you are welcome. But more work needs to be done. Reforms must continue. We must encourage gas. We must encourage downstream. We must also encourage to look at developing the petrochemicals. Sometimes in Africa, we have to also reflect on this and look at ourselves and say, isn't it a surprise when a country like Ukraine is at war, it still feeds us. We can feed Africa by developing urea, ammonia, fertilizer plants to feed our people and boost agriculture. 
that is really needed. Our above ground risk issues have to continue to be addressed because when we address our above ground risk issues, I'm a capitalist, I like cutting taxes. So if we can cut some more taxes and make it more friendlier, it will be good. Deal with VAT issues that will boost things up and really gives us a, give it a shot in the arm. But we must not forget that we still live in a times where more, as much as these reforms continue, I love the reform. Even Biden wants to have an action on it. He says he's coming here. He said, I'm not going to leave office without going to see the Angolan reforms. That's so good. You're welcome, Mr. President. But energy poverty is still real. We must reflect as we think about oil and gas. 600 million Africans don't have access to electricity. 900 million, no access to clean cooking technologies. Most of them women. We must be those agents of change. We must listen to her and those young girls. We must listen to these young people and understand that our job is not to be change makers for today, for our bank accounts, but also for those in this country that still are lacking of opportunity. That's why local content must be a cornerstone of this industry. Women have to be a centerpiece on how we drive. We can no longer accept that women are still the last hired and the first fire in our industry. We have to really take on those bold steps to target issues like abuse on women at the workplace and create a more livable and working environment for women to feel safe in our industry. Folks, if our industry respond to that calling with faith, then our industry starts to live to its true meaning. As we start new projects and as we move forward, we must look at young people and say, we, I'm an old man, I'm going on, but we must pass the rope. Look at a young person in the back and say, come eat at my table. Pass the rope to them and say, I've climbed bigger mountains, I've gone up some big trees, but you have to climb those mountains. But when you're a young guy, you climb up. Look down at me, wave at me, because I will still be climbing some other mountains. That's what our industry means. That's what Angola oil and gas means. That's what we must drive. And thank you for having this little country boy to start this conference. Thank you so much. Excellency Please President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Angolan government since 2017 has been promoting reforms to improve the legal instruments, contractual instruments, in order to create more competitive conditions and transparent to allow these instruments in the upstream and downstream in the oil and gas activity. In this particular, we realize that the traditional companies in our market and others have been manifesting their interest in exploration and development of oil fields in our country. would like to emphasize the fact that currently our greatest challenge is the mitigation and decline of oil production. And for this reason, the current focus of the government in the sector is the maintenance of production of this commodity above a million barrel per day during the coming years. We would also like to emphasize the fact that the Angolan government, under the leadership of His Excellency Juan Manuel Gonçalves Lorenzo, the President of the Republic, is still dedicated on measures to improve and consolidate a competitive business environment to attract investment and economy diversification. Uh, allowing uh, maximum benefits for the Angolan people and returns, just returns for the investors. We keep, we continue to explore hydrocarbons extractions, concessions, as well as the productions of blocks in coincidence with the strategies of concession distributions. Recently, the National Assembly approved the request of legislation that authorizes the president to legislate under the current 
on, on, on mature field to produce above the medium production PM, unlocking additional resources through new investments in these fields. The, there's an ongoing draft of strategy for distribution of conception for 2026-2030, considering the sustainability of oil production in long term. And this is under a public consultation phase for biofuel uh, strategies. It is an important instrument for development and monitorization of uh, natural gases. The production of these measures is possible due to the work team, the teamwork, focus, determination, and resilience of all stakeholders in the industries that have been revealing themselves. And we make use of this opportunity to reiterate our appeal in order to continue with the same spirit and determination in order to achieve our common goals, which we have set forth. We would also like to make use of this opportunity to reiterate our commitment to continue cooperating our partners in the industry and the international as uh, as well as regional organization for sustainability not only regionally continentally but also globally lastly we hope that all topics are planned for this uh, edition oil and gas 2024 uh, can be discussed largely and that the decisions can be guidelines to face the challenges in the current uh, oil and gas sector to assure energy security and achieve the sustainable objectives for the economy and the oil and gas sectors for our nations. Thank you very much. Africa represents about a fifth of our production, a quarter of our investment and more than a third of our exploration activities. And we've consistently pushed the boundaries of what is possible in the energy industry, and, and especially here in Angola, which is still the deep witness to all these human achievements. Our legacy is built on the foundation of hard work, dedication, and a, relent a relentless pursuit of excellence. And what, ma but what matters most now really is what's in front of us. So today we want to deliver more energy with less emissions and be ever more sustainable. So for Total Energies, the transition in Angola consists of keeping our production of oil and gas growing and increasing it, and launching renewables projects. So the company is involved in a number of brownfield projects which are made possible not only because of the geology, but also thanks to the conditions brought together by uh, ANPG and contractual matters that promote investments. And the Honourable Minister just described some of those a few minutes ago. And, and, and those reforms you know, will, will find its application very quickly. And in fact, for us, it's already led to, already led to the exploration of the Dahlia Deep Well, which is a well which has been on our radar for many, many years, but now we've drilled it, and also soon to the extension of the life of the Dahlia FPSO and some infill wells. So I really would like to recognize today the efforts made by the Murum Pet and ENPG for creating this favorable context, so well done. But I think it's a great story here in Angola, and I think, to be honest, we have a fantastic job working in the oil and gas industry in Angola. We're very lucky. Because we're also involved in some major greenfield projects. We launched the Begonia field a couple of years ago, which will start up next year. And of course, this year in May, we launched the Camino, the Camino development on Block 20 in the presence of our CEO, Patrick Puini. And Camino will be the first development in the Kwanzaa Basin, which opens up a new petroleum province for, uh, for Angola. And this will be a low-cost, low-emissions FPSO, which is fully electric, and our seventh FPSO in the country. So today we are proud to operate a diverse portfolio delivering production of more than 500,000 barrels per day from our FPSOs, with the support of all of our partners, which, which represents almost half of the production today of the country. Now, I spoke about producing differently, and producing differently means respecting the environment. <clears throat> and I want to give some examples of what, <coughs> of what we're doing along those lines. So we're implementing closed flare projects on the Girasol and Dahlia FPSO, which will reroute the gas, which normally goes to the flare back into the process so the gas can be monetized. And also as part of a $1 billion 
international program for energy efficiency, we're significantly reducing the energy consumption on our FPSOs, which again means the gas can be delivered to the market. So I also mentioned, you know, the, the renewable sides are our, our multi-energy strategy. And we're also expanding here in Angola in the renewable side. So together with Sonangol, we'll soon, we'll soon start constructing the 35 megawatt uh, Kilemba uh, photovoltaic plant. And of course, in Angola, we're, always, we're also present in the, uh, in the downstream sector. And today we have 52 service stations in the country, some of them equipped with, uh, with, with solar panels, and we continue to expand our network. And in fact, in the coming weeks, we'll soon start our second station with, uh, with high-speed EV charging, you know, which is a sign of we're moving towards the future. But I think as well, our commitment goes beyond the energy business, and, and we must also involve the communities in all of our activities. And I think one other good example of that, of our commitment to the, the, to the community, is the national challenge that we launched uh, earlier this year. Sem anos, sem emprendedores. I hope I got the pronunciation right. The hundred... Uh, 100 years, 100 entrepreneurs, which I think is, a, is a, an exciting program. In just four months, we've had, uh, we've had over 3,000 applications for this program across all the provinces of the, of the country. So today, I feel proud of the past, and I feel confident about the future of our collaboration with the Angolan authorities, with ANPG, with Sonangol, and with all of our local partners. If, if, I had, if I had a message today, I think it would be regarding the contractual and fiscal stability. I think it's so important for investors to work in an open, cooperative, and respectful, and respectful environment. And I think, and this is clearly, and this is clearly the case in Angola. And I think you can see the results for some of the projects that were mentioned at the beginning of the day, and some of the projects that we have sanctioned ourselves in the, in the, in the recent months. And we've also recently extended our concessions, so we'll be here for a, for a while longer, while building, you know, a brighter, a more sustainable future for our industry and for Africa and for Angola. E bonito un casamento que dura. Obrigado. As Azul Energy, we have built a new relationship, and I believe a stronger relationship between our two companies and this remarkable country. One where we're growing in confidence together. Where our commitment is stronger than ever and one built on common goals. Let me, say, let me briefly say a little more about each of these three points. First, confidence. I would like to pay tribute to the actions of the government in the time since we created Azul two years ago. Actions such as the positive terms and flexibility to oil and gas producing companies and legislation that paved the way for the establishment of the new gas consortium, opening the door for Angola's first natural gas field development, which Azul Energy is proud to operate. By providing confidence to those seeking to invest in the country, Angola encourages something else. It encourages commitment, which is my second point. BP's commitment to Angola began 25 years ago and continues today through the successful Azul Energy joint venture. Angola's largest independent producer of oil and gas, producing well over 200,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, with the ambition to produce a quarter of a million barrels per day within the next few years. Energy produced off Angola's coast, which is central to its overall success. And our work together does not st stop there. Last year at this very conference, Azul agreed to expand its cooperation on decarbonisation initiatives in Angola. It's working towards finalising plans for the Karakula Phase 2 solar project, building on the success of Phase 1, which started up in 2023. And actively working with the government and partners to seek ways to reduce emissions producing oil and gas, and investing in low carbon solutions. And this brings me to my third point, common goals. Common goals that BP, Azul Energy, and Angola are pursuing. They are the common goals necessary to ensure energy flows to where it is needed today. While the new energy system is being built for tomorrow, 
They are common goals that enable the just and fair energy transition that we, we desire. They are quite simply the common goals needed in a changing world. Azul's work now extends beyond Angola's borders with plans to drill exploration wells offshore Namibia later this year with our partner Rhino Resources, but managed from here in Angola with Angolan talent. This will help unlock resources from the Orange Basins, which is becoming a very prolific oil and gas field. This is in addition to the 14 exploration wells being drilled in Angolan waters by Azul over the next few years, specifically in Block 114, the first gas, the first specific gas exploration well in Angola, and Block 47, which could open up a new area of the deep water. In turn, supporting Azul's vision to become a regional leader in the energy sector. I've talked about confidence, commitment, and common goals, and I'll finish up with one final word beginning with C, and that is community. I say that because our presence in this country, our commitment to this country, goes beyond producing energy. It's also about contributing to the communities in which we work. For BP and Azul, we are proud to have helped serve the Angolan community, delivering schools and to delivering schools to educate this country's children, training many hundreds of health professionals and supporting thousands of farmers, protecting many thousands of hectares of mangroves, mangroves and millions of turtles, and cleaning two provinces of landmines that blighted communities. So we're delivering for Angola and its people. We look forward to building on our fantastic relationship together, a relationship founded on confidence, commitment, and common goals. Thank you. Our commitment is to continue investing in Angola. And he is present in Africa since, since 1950. And uh, for the years, there's consolidated a model of a dual flag, which implies a spirit of a equal cooperation that goes beyond the uh, business or corporate activities. And thanks to this approach, we contributed to the development of the uh, energy sector locally. And at the same time, we support uh, development of activities of economic diversities and structural projects. The African continent has got enormous potential and is growing in the global economy and the strategy of any is to approach uh, a more complete uh, environment in the sector more than 50 percent of the investment in research in the last 10 years was for africa uh, first, in the first place, any always had a constant focus in exploration, realizing a huge number of uh, uh, great discoveries. Just to mention a few recent ones in Africa, that uh, the Minister of Ivory Coast, the first few discoveries after 20 years of trials by other players. Apart from that, we've been um, uh, the main players for startup for liquor resources, like uh, the Coral Sul of Mozambique, the first LNG uh, floating unit for an African country, which will soon uh, duplicate its capacity with the development of the Northern Coral. Last year, 2023, the DRC also became one of the few exporters of LNG thanks to our project. In Angola, Mr. President, we went beyond with the creation of Azul, like uh, mentioned by Gordon. It's a combination of business with BP to, to add value to the synergies and bring about this transformation. We mentioned the new consor guest consortium. So it was the first project with the purpose to uh, value non-associated guests. Uh, the new FPSO, Gordon, 
a multi-billion dollar project which was created to be uh, one of the most efficient ones in the world with the implementation of the latest technologies. And we hope to anticipate the uh, start up of both projects as a result of our efficiency during the execution phase. 2025 will also have a significant um, commitment with exploration for Azul, with the exploration of two, I mean, three important wells, which were mentioned earlier, uh, block 14 to unlock legal reserves and uh, deep waters in 46 and 47. I mean, 46 and then uh, 28 in Namibia. So apart from that, as it was mentioned by Gordon, Namibia also reflects a greatest mission of Azul to uh, set itself as a key actor in the energy sector in the region, promoting local employment and development. Ladies and gentlemen, together we are starting a journey towards that which we call an a just uh, energy transition, assuring uh, access to energy by the population. At the same time, uh, we promote sustainability, uh, accessibility, and economic growth. It's an economic integrated model for any for biofuels. We produce. Uh, vegetable oil from raw materials that are uh, cultivated in degraded lands or uh, cultivations of second cultures, valuing uh, agro-industrial uh, products without removing earth or food production or other natural ecosystems. And Angola has got huge potential to produce raw agricultural materials for biorefinery or bio Field. We are promoting initiatives to uh, impulse this um, uh, value added to agriculture with the production of a uh, a hundred thousand tons of uh, oil through the cultivations of Mamona in degraded areas and uh, over 150,000 hectares of land. And with the involvement of over 100,000 farmers that will benefit uh, additional income and annual income. We are also involved in sustainable development in Angola through integrated projects that are set in education, access to portable water, energy, and care. For instance, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health of Angola, we have implemented an initiative to combat infectious diseases and improve maternal and infant health. This project already trained all over 600 personnel in health, achieving about uh, 130,000 patients. Together, we are moving in the same direction with the strategic vision. Thank you very much.